okay so very good morning to you all uh, thank you for subin for organizing this event and we at astra rv uh, are today will be talking about the ongoing pandemic of covid 19 so the story we all know about the, the story of covid 19 it all started in china in december 2019 and it has gone across the globe and reached most of the continents and countries across the globe so if you look at the statistics and spread of this virus so the virus initially started in china and it exponentially grew in numbers and initially it spread to iran later into the european countries of italy spain uk and later into the united states and after that most of the countries became naturally affected with the virus and today there is no country probably in the world which is can say that they don't have any significant number of cases but over a period of time the the rise in the number of cases have become significantly less so the concept of flattening the curve has been achieved by implementation of the strict lockdown measures across the world in india here in india as well this implementation of lockdown measures have been greatly helpful because we don't have a significant number of deaths as compared to the european countries as we saw the mortality rate in european countries was were all in double digits and most and some of the countries even had a mortality rate up to 15% but here in india the mortality is between 2 to 3% which is uh, which is a good job done by us so far but the story is still not over for india because as you can see initially when the number of cases started rising it all started here with the china and as you can see the number started increasing exponentially and china implemented a very strict lockdown and the number number of cases started coming down but italy and spain and united states uk were not so aggressive and their number of cases kept rising but ultimately when good sense prevailed they put in the measures and the curve started flattening but as far as india is concerned as you can see very clearly the pandemic is still not over for us because number of cases continues to raise the curve is still pointing upwards and we still have a lot of time wherein the number of cases can continue to raise so we all have to be very cautious in the coming days the number of cases of covid-19 can definitely go high and even the number of, even the percentage of mortality can also continue to raise so how do we dissect this population criteria so the number of people who are becoming sick and getting admitted to the hospital let's say there are 100 people who are getting infected with covid-19 up to 80% of those patients will have very mild disease or may even be asymptomatic 15 up to 15% 14 15% of these people may become sick enough that they need to be admitted in the hospital and needs up needs to be observed in the wards requiring oxygen supplementation and other medications to uh, treat them symptomatically and up to 5% of these patients who are infected with covid-19 may become significantly ill requiring admission to critical care or intensive care requiring ventilatory support as well as niv support so this is the current criteria so we can be little uh, we, we we don't have to be really panicky here because up to 80% majority of the patients will have a mild disease and they recover on their own further ahead if you look at the age uh, age criteria most of the people who become critically ill are going to be in the elderly population above 60 years of age okay so uh this what this is what happened in european countries as well because they have more of elderly population there and increased number of deaths um which happened in the european countries was attributed one of the one of the factors was definitely the elderly population of the european countries but in here in india we have uh, most of our population is quite young compared to the european population the second criteria which we need to understand will be the associated comorbidities so what do you mean by that people who are having cardiovascular disease like people with heart diseases people with diabetes people with high blood pressures people with chronic respiratory diseases like asthma interstitial lung disease copd smoker's lungs etc and a cancer patient with cancers malignancies will be in a higher risk of contracting covid-19 and becoming severely sick requiring hospital admission 
rest of the people who don't have any existing conditions will not become so sick okay they will they will definitely manifest with the very mild symptoms so as you can see here uh, only my, with no comorbidities they will have only 1% risk of becoming seriously seriously sick and as the number of conditions increases the risk of becoming severely sick also keeps increasing okay so the most vulnerable ones like the elderly ones people with more comorbidities needs to be uh, taken care of more aggressively okay though so they, they should not go out freely they should always take extra precautions avoiding the crowd wearing the mask and hand hygiene cough and tickets all of these precautions to be very strictly and stringently followed in this group of population because they are more vulnerable of becoming very sick requiring icu admissions so this is what ha what's happening in the month of april the number of deaths caused by covid-19 uh, covid-19 was in the sixth position so with the progression of the pandemic now it has come to the third spot so number of people dying out of covid-19 are increasing okay so covid-19 cannot be taken lightly this can kill people and kill people in huge numbers so this has to be taken seriously and all the measures needs to be implemented very stringently so this is the concept of flattening the curve as you saw this curve in many countries like uh, china so once the number of cases starts increasing they increase very exponentially because of the spread of the virus from person to person if you don't implement any measures okay if you don't implement any uh, preventive measures this is how the graph would look like but if you look if you implement strict lockdown measures and all the precautionary measures the spread of the virus or the pandemic will be very slow like this so this line here is the ability of the healthcare system to take care of these patients who are coming their way being very sick this is what happened in italy so their healthcare uh, their ability to manage the patients was only till here and suddenly the number of cases increased so they were not able to manage it but now here in india we have, because of implementation of the measures the rise of the infection of the pandemic is being slow so we have adequate number of beds now adequate number of ppe and all other uh, measures which are which needs to be there are there in not in the place now because we we got sufficient time to implement this okay so this is these are the measures that we need to implement as far as our uh, vulnerable population is concerned mostly in the elderly population we should ensure that they have adequate nutrition and they are they have good immunity levels they should exercise as much as possible indoors and meditate keep their minds relaxed now there is a uh, explosion of the amount of info, uh, information that is being available to us and sometimes it can make us uh, very pessimistic and be scared of things so you need to take a time off and uh, be relaxed take your prescribed medications regularly people who are having all other comorbidities like diabetes hypertension asthma etc should continue their medications regularly sometimes you may not be able to come to the hospital you can always utilize the online consultation facility which is available stay in touch with the doctors and don't stop your medications and continue to so that it, you buy time so the pandemic goes away after that probably you can come out and then uh, in, you know change the modification those modification all those things can be done but always it's a good idea to be in touch with your medical uh, you know, hospitals and doctors and continue your medications as much as required second thing is stay in, uh, stay at home and avoid meeting visitors somebody coming from outside will be a great risk for these people right because the virus doesn't jump from one person to another person without a host okay because human beings are the ones who spread the virus from one place to another person uh, another place or from one person to another person if there is no uh, host which is available then the spread of the virus will not happen so that is why that is the importance of uh, social distancing and uh, not going out unnecessarily and the second thing is that washing your hands and face at regular intervals with soap and water or with hand sanitizers because if there is a virus and some somebody is infected with the virus he coughs and sneezes and these viruses are carried in their droplet secretions and deposited on the surfaces like tables or it may be chair etc and some other person who has not been infected with the virus comes and touches the surface he inadvertently picks up this infection from that in his hands and from in this in, in those hands if it touches his own face like uh, eyes nose mouth etc then that virus can go inside his body and can infect that person as well so this is how the transmission of the virus happens from person who is infected it goes through the droplet when he coughs and sneezes and gets deposited on the surfaces and the person who has never been infected touches the surface after that it touches his own face and he gets infected okay that is why we need to keep our hands clean keep keep, keep washing our hands with soap and water and with the alcohol based uh, hand sanitizers and whenever you are feeling sick like with a cough a sneeze 
or uh, mild flu like symptoms stay at home take adequate rest and whenever whenever you're coughing and sneezing make sure you're covering your nose and mouth if you don't have any you know handkerchief or anything anything immediately you can just use your elbow to cough and sneeze there so that doesn't the droplet doesn't spread far and infect people around around you okay so other thing is that talk to your family members and friends via video calling so if you if you feel like you're staying alone and you need to socialize you can always use a technology of video calling and video conferencing all the surfaces clean should be kept and kept clean by frequent uh, disinfection using the various disinfectant which are available and whenever you have uh, any respiratory symptoms don't ignore them even if you have mild symptoms get in touch with your hospitals or nearby clinics and get it sorted out so it is better to be more over cautious in these times than to neglect uh, the symptoms okay so now with the lifting of the lockdown most of the offices are being open and a lot of uh, standard operating procedures have been advised by the government and all of these measures are very very important for us to prevent the further raise in the number of cases and the death associated with the pandemic as i mentioned the pandemic is not over here in india and we need to follow all these measures very stringently the most important is at the entrance of the office itself everybody should be screened to uh, for temperature and uh, should be asked whether they have any symptoms like fever coughs cold etc only people who doesn't have these symptoms staff and visitors should be allowed inside the building if somebody has these symptoms should be, they should be advised to go to a hospital or a clinic or to stay at home and take rest so people who are staying in the containment zones etc should be advised to work from home if it is possible that's always a good idea to stay at home and continue doing your work okay if it is not absolutely required to go to the office and um, drivers to maintain social distancing whenever whenever you're, whenever you're traveling through your cabs you should make sure the drivers take adequate precautions and uh, the surface disin disinfection with the help of uh, one person sodium hypochlorite solution should be done the, in the, in the interior of the vehicles the surfaces the, the seats etc should be cleaned uh, frequently when you're traveling in the the cabs the office cabs the second thing is so inside the office uh, people who are more vulnerable as i mentioned elderly ones or people uh, you know, pregnant employees people with more comorbidities should take extra precautions and can stay at home and work from home if possible and all officers and staff visitors to be allowed entry only if they are wearing face mask anybody entering the office building should mandatorily be wearing face mask or a face cover and uh, the proper number of visitors to the office should be limited to as less as possible all the meetings as far as as possible uh, possible should be conducted uh, using video conferencing and uh, uh, there should be adequate information for the people entering the building as to what are all the precautions that is being followed in that particular building and what they need to do as much as possible there should be staggering of the hours you, know, you can use appointment methods to reduce the number of people come walking into the building give them a specific time wherein they need to come and get their job done and then uh, they can go away so there is no excessive crowding which is happening inside the office building which can lead to spread of the infection and the valet the people who are at the entrance the security the valet people everybody should wear to uh, take adequate precautions like wearing mask using gloves etc the common areas in, inside the office building like uh, the shops the stalls the cafeteria again should also follow adequate social distancing measures the seating and all should be adequately spaced so that people don't get crowded there and people who are waiting in the waiting areas like the lifts etc should also may, may, should maintain uh, the social distancing measure and whenever there is a, uh, whenever the people are in, in the work areas as well the hand sanitizers and the places to wash the hands should be freely made available so that people can keep cleaning their hands when they are touching any surfaces including the computer systems and the seating arrangement should be made as well, uh, as far as the possible to maintain the social distancing norms then then comes the most important thing about the ventilation of the of these buildings most of the buildings will be having the ac fitted there and there is a lot of you know queries and doubts regarding what type of ac should be used so i have a separate slide for that i'll come to that then um, specific preventive measures like uh, the face mask gloves etc should be used in all by all the employees and the people walking into the building as well so whenever you are using the washrooms the common areas the lavatories etc the taps the surfaces everything should be cleaned 
uh, as frequently as possible because these are the areas which are shared by a lot of people and should be disinfected as frequently as possible okay and uh, people who are ill who are coming to the office should be informed to stay at home and report to the doctors as early as possible any person coming to the office uh, reports any symptoms of fever cough etc they should be immediately asked to visit a nearby hospital or a clinic and uh, any 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 person they should every hospital or every building any office building should have a protocol to uh, address these health issues some if any of your employee becomes sick then there should be a method to isolate them to take them to a nearest hospital or if there is an in house doctor they should be informed about their conditions and they should be adequately treated as well as adequately followed up uh, regarding their symptoms and health authorities should be adequately informed okay so the uh, and if the, if somebody people who are working with them who are, who had become sick the contacts who had come in contact with these people who are who, are, who have been working in the office and have become sick so they should be you know contact tracing should happen and people who have been in immediately uh, in close contact with these people will be of a little higher risk and people who stay away from them may be of little lower risk so depending upon the icmr protocol so they may have to be tested for covid 19 and uh, they may have to be isolated for next 14 days depending upon the symptoms and how much how severe is the amount of uh, exposure okay so there are a lot of guidelines there uh, provided by the government so please go through those it's available in the mygov uh, website okay and um, they keep changing and updating this information so any office building because that is the next next uh, hot spot where in the people coming in from outside from different areas meeting together and this is where the spread of infections can happen so all these measures to be implemented very strictly stringently so that uh, the numbers cases of covid-19 doesn't rise exponentially okay so these are the different types of acs uh, like window acs and we have the exhaust fan so how they should be uh, you know in, used uh, in the office space for example the exhaust fan should run continuously for exhausting the hot air supplementing air circulation of all types so devices like uh, ceiling uh, you no know, ceiling fan air cooler air room acs etc so the basic um, understanding is there should not be a recirculation of the air that you are breathing inside a closed space as much as possible there should be ventilation which is happening and the exhaust of the ac from the common area in the closed space should be taken out and to a distant place from the existing building so these are all the different guidelines which are available and i think uh, the office authorities may be interested in knowing and implementing these things okay so in the office or when you come back from office to home Uh, as i mentioned hand hygiene is very very important so there is very there is very specific methods as to how you should wash your hands so that uh, the proper disinfection uh, happening so the first step is to put a you know wet your hand and put a hand sanitizer or a hand wash meaning the the wash uh, the hand wash or a soap onto the palm and rub one palm on the other so that there is a frothing and then the palm gets clean second is between the fingers you rub uh, The, your, your five fingers uh, inter, uh, interlock with other fingers of the hand, and you have, to, you have to rub it five times. And the back of the hand, as shown here, and the base of the thumb. And the fifth step is to clean the tip of your uh, fingers, the nail, etc., and the finger nails itself, the wrist. And once everything is done, again you wash your hand in the running water, and you dry it with the uh, tissue. Um, so this is how you can clean your uh, hands properly, and this is uh, quite effective that way. so other precautions that you have to take care when uh, uh, follow that one when, when you return home from your office will be immediately after uh, coming back home you have to remove your mask and gloves as per proper guidelines you should not touch the front of the mask or inside of the mask you have to remove by holding the strings which you use to put your mask on and uh, you should uh, uh, remove your mask and gloves as uh, as soon as you enter your house and uh, dispose them properly in a separate cover the footwear own outside can be sprayed with disinfectant such as dettol or bleach and kept separately or then fill a bucket of water and add a few drops of disinfectant and soak the clothes own outside in water after washing what are the clothes you have been wearing when you were when you are working in the office when you come back home so first thing is you remove them and soak it in a water bucket of water with the disinfectants and keep it for uh, soaking there okay then after that have a bath after reaching home so wash your hands and feet thoroughly with soap and warm with the methods i just i mentioned now 
and uh, dispose of all the mask, gloves, and other possible contaminated material in a separate bag. Okay. So you take off your mask, take off your gloves, and put it in a separate cover and discard it separately. You take off your clothes and put it to wash, preferably uh, with with a disinfectant soap water. and take and uh, take bath as soon as you reach home so that you don't carry any infection and spread it to people at home okay so in addition to this uh, the cdc also has very strict guidelines as to what types of mask you should wear and it says it is okay to wear a closed mask and anybody who is leaving the house should compulsorily wear a mask why is that because why as i mentioned 80% of the people who get infected may not develop any symptoms or they may they have very mild symptoms despite that they can continue to spread the infection to others okay they can spread the disease to others despite they themselves not having the symptoms this is why everybody compulsorily should wear a face mask or a face cover when they get out of the house to wherever they go whether they go into office whether they go into buy something etc so at all times you should cover your face with a face mask or a face cover stay at home as much as possible if you have to go outside practice social distancing 6 feet is the one which is currently recommended and clean your hands as often as possible as i have suggested just now okay so what are the do's and don'ts for the mask wash your hands before touching the mask okay before putting on the mask wash your hands because if, if your hands are already infected and you, with infected hands if you touch your mask you are transmitting the infection to the mask so first wash your hands after that inspect the mask for any tears or holes the mask should be of good quality and in good condition and find the top side of the mask where there is a metal piece okay this is for the surgical mask which comes with a metal strip on the top of the mask here and that is the one which should be placed on the nasal bridge on the, on the nose okay and place the metal strip or stiff edge over the nose and press it so that it takes the shape of your nose because each of our nose uh, face contour is different so and this mask should completely cover your mouth nose and chin okay the, the chin below should be completely covered and the nose nasal bridge above should be completely covered so this is how adequate there should not be any gap between the skin and the mask okay so avoid touching the mask once you put on the mask don't keep touching your mask with your hands avoid always uh, touching the mask and touch from and also touching your eyes uh, as well so if you want to remove the mask you remove the mask from the behind the ears as i told the strings which you have tied behind your ears they are those are the ones which should be held and remove the mask in the front and keep the mask away from the surfaces while removing it don't touch any surfaces after removing the mask and discard it properly inside a bin after discarding the mask again wash your hands properly okay so what you should not do do not use a mask which is ripped or damped a wet mask should immediately be discarded and changed do not wear the mask over the mouth or nose okay if you wear a mask you should completely cover your nose mouth and chin you should not be like uh, covering only the mouth and not the nose do not wear a loose mask a mask should be tightly fitting and there should not be any gap between the mask and the face it should not be very loose otherwise it is of no use do not touch your mask with your bare hands and do not keep pulling your uh, mask up and down while talking to people it should always be there on your face even when you are talking to other people okay and do not allow the mask uh, to be at reach to be you know should become clearly discarded like kids playing at home should not be able to go and touch them and get infected with that okay so there are clear cut guidelines uh, of for using the face cover using the cloth mask as well the cloth mask should cover your mouth and nose completely it should snugly fit on the face and uh, there should not be any free space between this uh, face cover as and, and the skin so the air doesn't go in between the mask and the skin so and uh, along with this you should take all the precautions while removing the mask as as i just explained and after using this uh, cloth mask they should be cleaned uh, regularly every day and with the help of either a washing machine or with the help of a, a, a bleach powder with the with, with the hot with the warm water so when you are using a, a washing machine that your washing machine setting should be kept to the warmest possible so that um, uh, the disinfection happens properly and when you are using uh, you are cleaning your uh, mask cloth mask with the help of uh, uh, a bleach a uh, bleach powder and the and water it should be kept dip, dipped inside this uh, uh, bleach water mixed water uh, water or, or any disinfect disinfectant you prefer to use and uh, they should be cleaned and washed and uh, preferably be dried in the sun okay or if you are washing it in the washing machine it can be dried in the washing machine as well okay so uh, these are the you know standard operating procedures they have advised to be followed in the schools and um, 
uh, once the school starts to maintain the social distancing, wear a mask always, keep your hands clean and tidy, keep washing your hands, keep your hands clean. So disinfect any items which you use, for example, maybe mobile, maybe keys, etc., watch, etc., should be disinfected. And when you have any doubts, you can always call the helpline. That is 1075 is the helpline, state helpline, helpline number, and get your get your uh, no doubts cleared. And inside the school building, do not get, uh, gather in large numbers. And keep your social distancing. Keep your mask on all the time. Don't spit in public places. Avoid sharing your personal belongings, etc. So there are you know, by and large there have been uh, standard operating procedures being advised for a lot of uh, different you know opportunities sort of different situations like people visiting to malls, people visiting restaurants. So by and large, most of the things are the, the same. There should be a mandatory screening at the enter, entrance of the buildings. Only people who are asymptomatic without any symptoms should be allowed to enter the building. After entering the building, everybody should maintain a social distancing. Everybody should wear a mask. Everybody should keep their hands clean. And whenever they're coming into a common area, they should continue to maintain social distancing measures. So these are all the common methods and common precautions that everybody needs to follow. Okay, so these are freely available in the government websites. If somebody uh, likes to, you know, uh, download it and to be implemented uh, and be uh, circulated amongst the people uh, in that particular situation. Okay, so apart from that, this is for the hospital and uh, hotels, hospital uh, hospitals and hotels. So the, uh, the hotels, people uh, visiting any hotels uh, should avoid visiting the containment zones near the hotels. That is one thing. Uh, Second thing is, the so communication between the guests should be done as much as possible using intercom and mobiles. And uh, when you're visiting uh, religious places, avoid touching the holy books, idols, statues, etc., which can be, uh, which may be touched by many other people visiting there. And um, try to use uh, distance communications like post mobiles, etc., as much as possible. Avoid, uh, you know, physical offerings and using the common spaces, et cetera, okay? So certain precautions to be followed when you're uh, traveling, since the, now that uh, the ban on traveling has been lifted. Um, so there are a lot of uh, guidelines there as well. So people visiting, traveling, mandatory sh uh, should download Arogya Setu app. This is a very, very important app as, well as, as far as government contact tracing is concerned. And um, uh, there are a lot of, um, Announcement which are which are being made if you're planning to do a, uh, air travel and uh, rail travel bus travel etc So you need to be aware of certain things which are uh, which have been implemented there So mandatory everybody should wear a mask keep your hands clean and respiratory hygiene and cough etiquette needs to be followed And at the entrance of all of these there will be a thermal screening you should be, be prepared for that reach there early because screening will take some time and uh, the airport railways bus terminals needs to be regularly sanitized and uh, if, if you are traveling there, make sure you carry a hand sanitizer, etc. Because if you inadvertently touch any surfaces, you need to keep your cleaning your hands because these are all common areas, and you don't you never know who has been there before, right? And um, there is a very clear ICMR guidelines, and it keeps changing and getting updated as to who needs to be tested. Initially, they told anybody coming out from other districts, other states needs to be tested and uh, needs to be quarantined, etc. Now the guidelines have changed. So you can visit those ICMR uh, uh, websites and government websites to get uh, the guidelines, okay? And as far as air travel um, guidelines are concerned, if you are anybody coming from outside the country, visiting India, needs to sign a document telling that uh, they are ready for 14 days of uh, quarantine and uh, home quarantine for people with, uh, with, uh, with special situations, but mostly everybody should will be, have to be prepared for uh, institutional uh, a quarantine okay uh, so these are the guidelines now and all the precautions which i mentioned will be uh, will will definitely be strictly followed they're wearing mask hand hygiene cough etiquette social distancing etc so by and large the, those are the general rules uh, so in all the uh, situations so this is the arogyo setu app so this will give us a lot of information if you need to download in your phone keep your bluetooth on and uh, it gives a lot of information as to whether you are safe, whether you have any low risk of infection, moderate risk of infection, high risk of infection, et cetera. And uh, this helps in government in uh, tracking the situation and helping people in giving a lot of information 
uh, about the ongoing pandemic. Information is very important and you should get um, good information uh, which are fact-based, fact-checked from the government authorities and don't fall for the um, unnecessary false information which is being spread as well. So these are the myths and facts. So many people have doubts whether Corona, uh, first question, first query would be coronavirus, can it be passed by eating meat like chicken and meat? So the answer is no. And a person with coronavirus can recover fully and be no more infectious. As I mentioned, 80% of the people will have very mild disease. So most of the people do recover from the infections very easily. And, but still the research is going on because we, don't, we still don't have any proper specific treatment or we don't even have a proper vaccine as of now. So the only thing which we have now is are all the, the social measures which we have implemented in defeating this pandemic. Apart from that, medically, unfortunately, we don't have any specific treatment or any specific virus which is available for the treatment of this infection. So eating things like raw garlic, sesame seeds will it protect against the virus. We don't have any data for that. It may be a health benefit in some other ways, but for this particular infection, we don't have any adequate data for that. And uh, uh, this virus can die easily once it is out of the body. So that is not true because as I, be, I have been discussing with you, the virus can stay and survive on the surfaces for a significant duration of time. So somebody has come there, coughed and sneezed on the surface and he has gone away. The virus can still survive on the, on, on the surface. This, that is why it is very important to keep your hands clean. Whenever you touch a surface, you keep cleaning your hands. Okay, so this is the significance of that. Can you get a COVID-19 through mosquito bites? No, that doesn't spread through mosquito bites. So with the summer coming up, uh, with the temperature increasing, becoming hot and humid, the virus will not spread. That is not true because we have seen virus, uh, the uh, COVID-19 pandemic happening in almost all the countries, even temperate zones, which are hot and humid as well. Does, uh, uh, if somebody is infected with the virus already taking bath, does it kill the virus? No, the virus you know, goes inside the body, it causes infection, it spreads everywhere. So your body has to develop immunity and you have to recover from the virus. Taking bath in hot water and all will not be a curative thing. And um, getting the pneumonia vaccine will protect against the virus. Uh, so we used to give flu, vaccine, flu shots and uh, pneumonia vaccines for people with respiratory diseases. But unfortunately, those vaccines will not be of any benefit for the COVID-19 infection. So COVID-19 is a separate infection for which we don't have a vaccine yet. Okay, so other vaccination, other vaccines will not be protective for COVID-19. Okay? Spraying alcohol or disinfectant over the body can prevent the infection. No, uh, using alcohol-based solutions over your hands can prevent the spread of the infection. Uh, well, if you're touching your hands, uh, from, uh, with your hands, you're touching your uh, um, face, eyes, and nose, that can spread the infection that way. So keeping your hands clean with the help of hand sanitizers can prevent the spread of infection. Regularly rinsing the nose and saline, uh, with saline will prevent the infection. So rinsing nose with saline in few cases helped in containing common cold, but has no evidence to suggest it is effective against novel coronavirus infection, okay? So these are a few of the myths we have uh, addressed there. So this is currently has become the norm, the new normal. Uh, everybody have to wear the face mask and it's, it's become a new flag for the current world, for the new world order probably. So this virus has, uh, in, a, in, in a way, has brought all of us together, has, has leveled the ground for all of us and uh, has made, it hum made, made us humble in a way. So as of now, this is the new normal. We have to be very cautious, use the face mask regularly, keep our hands clean, follow all the social distancing measures. So until this pandemic is over, we have to be following these measures significantly in a very, very um, uh, proper, stringent ways. Thank you all, thank you so much. Thank you, doctor. I think now we can move into uh, interactive sections. Uh, if you have any queries, you can please you know, ask doctor.
Unmute everybody. Doctor, could I ask a question? Yes, sir, please go ahead. Um, it has been very educative and illuminating. Thank you for that. But uh, there are some reports that it has something to do with the blood group, and some blood groups are, uh, you know, <clears throat> very uh, you know vulnerable, and some groups are not. Is there any evidence for that? So as of now, we are not um, determining the blood groups for the treatment of these patients, because um, uh, as far as our information is concerned, the data coming out of US, UK, etc. So there is no correlation with the blood group with the severity of the disease itself. So the strong correlation has been with the age and associated comorbidities. And apart from that, the immunity levels of the people, all those things will matter. Blood group as such uh, itself is not a risk factor as of now. Maybe when you get a larger data uh, with bigger meta-analysis, probably we may get uh, some, we may be able to throw some light on that. But as of now, we are not considering that as a risk factor. Thank you, doctor. I am 79 and I keep indoors for the past three months, though it has given me some psychological, you know, pressure, but I'm just, you know, doing some yoga and exercise and moving inside the house, keeping myself fit and all that. But how long I can put on with, put up with this, I don't know. Uh, I am in Bangalore, of course, in the city and in Elahanka, it's a green zone, but still I don't venture out. As of now. You, you, you have done excellent, sir. You will be a motivate, you'll be a great motivation for others as well. Thank you. Thank you for putting all the effort. I, I get everything online. Um, whether you know the thing is uh, we cannot get what we like, but I have started liking what we get. Yes, thank you so much. Uh hello, doctor. Hi. Yeah, hi, yeah. Uh, I am CB, I'm from Russia. Okay. Okay. Uh the uh, the thing is. There is a lot of miscommunication happen nowadays that in India, mainly in India, that the vitamin C tablets and D tablets is helpful for the uh, more immune, Im immunity. Uh, do you agree with that? See, vitamin C, vitamin E tablets uh, definitely can uh, can help in the immunity in certain ways. For example, if we have a wound for wound healing or any any recovery from any certain diseases, etc. In a, gen in a general way, all the vitamins, zinc, etc., all these micronutrients are definitely uh, useful in uh, getting better or getting healed from the disease or the, or the wounds. So in that way, definitely it, it may be of benefit, but we cannot uh, say that this is the cure. Okay? So it can be an add-on for the, for, the, for, the, for the treatment of the infection, virus, etc. Yeah, so if, if specifically for people who have any deficiency of, of this uh, vitamins and zinc, etc., then it will be definitely of great benefit for them. Otherwise, you can always take supplements, so it should not be a you know, big issue. And one more thing, one more thing. See, uh, nowadays um, we are the, the, uh, mainly the hospitals, they are using the mask with uh, cloth mask. So, uh, in my experience, I think that is very uh, dangerous nowadays because always they are touching. We cannot identify the both sides. So uh, it is beneficial. But mainly, uh, I think most of the hospitals are mainly in Kerala and some of them in Kannada, Bangalore, they are using the mask. So Both mask? The face mask with clothes. Cotton clothes. Mainly we were used Face them. mask, yeah. See, the face mask with made up of clothes is not recommended for hospital use. For hospital use, it is always the surgical mask or the N95 mask, depending upon where you're working. Because hospital is not like a homogeneous place. We have OPDs, we have entrances, we have OPDs, we have inpatients, we have ICUs, we have OTs. So depending upon the risk of exposure, we advise to use different types of masks. For the general population, cloth mask would be sufficient. But people who are at higher risk of contracting the infection, people working at hospital, are recommended to use surgical mask if they're working in the hospital in the common areas, if they're working in the OPDs with higher risk of contracting the infection, somebody especially sitting in front of and coughing in front of you. So obviously cloth okay. mask is not sufficient. You have to use proper N95 mask. And if you're uh, okay. working uh, like a pulmonologist like me who, who do high risk procedure, like producing a lot of aerosols, like, like bronchoscopy procedure, gastroscopy procedure. So they need to use proper 
mask with respirators and complete PPE kits. So definitely not recommended to use simple masks in the hospital. No. Thank you, doctor. Thank you so much. Uh, hi, hi, doctor. I am Gaurav from Hyderabad. Uh, I had a question. So, uh, like we see that uh, certain uh, medical firms are claiming that they are actually uh, in uh, being positive in creating the uh, vaccine for uh, coronavirus. How true would that be? And will, I, will any kind of such vaccine will be available in the market soon? So, the vaccine trials are happening in a lot of countries. Even the vaccine efforts are happening even in India as well. But uh, preparing a vaccine is one thing and doing the trials, whether they work, and the dosing of the vaccines, how frequently you have to give vaccines, and once you give the vaccine, how long that immunity will last. All these are lots of questions are involved with the vaccine, the process of manufacturing or identifying a vaccine. It's not like a, it's not a simple procedure, and it will definitely take a lot of time from the experiences of the, from our previous experiences. So if somebody claims the vaccine, so already, like something? No, as, of, as of now, there's no vaccine has been, uh, you know, recommended to be used for COVID-19 as, as of now, but definitely a lot of trials are going on and we're still awaiting data regarding that. So a lot of companies, a lot of countries are, are doing a lot of trials. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, good afternoon, Doctor. This is Mrs. Pillay from Nagpur. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Uh, sir, I just wanted to ask you if someone is traveling from other states, mm -hmm. Uh, so, what are the precautions they should be taking during their flight? And uh, once they come here, is, is it uh, advised a for, for seven days quarantine or a 14 days quarantine? Home so quarantine. Have, yeah. So, basically, what uh, these guidelines and the guidelines keep changing every day. Yeah. Okay. Even we keep getting up, updating ourselves. Okay. So, um, the best thing for you to do is to get in touch with the airlines. To which you have booked your tickets and they will get, send they suppose send you a detailed information regarding that. As okay. As common precautions are concerned, you have to keep wearing a mask all the time, keep hand sanitizer handy, and avoid uh, coming in contact with people, maintain a social distancing, and uh, travel light, take as less you know, luggages as possible. And uh, when you're entering the airport and exiting the airport, there will be a screening happening there. So we have to be patient and give them proper information. And uh, as far as quarantine, quarantining uh, measures are concerned, it all depends upon whether you're entering a containment zone, whether you're entering different zones. So you really need to check it uh, more uh, specifically from the people, uh, uh, you know, the airlines to which you're traveling. Madam. Sir, but uh, once they come home, uh, like, is it possible that uh, we can have, uh, you know, food together or talk to each other following all the protocols? Lord, is, uh, should they be confined to the room only? It all depends upon the symptoms of the of the person who is who has come come back. So if they're totally asymptomatic and if the government has advised that their their observation period is over, then probably yeah. they should be okay. So nevertheless, they will, you it's better idea to you know download that Arogya Setu app and keep yourself yeah. updated and keep following all the rules. And if you have any symptoms, definitely inform the health authorities. It become, basically becomes. Everybody's responsibility. It's not like somebody is telling us to do and we have to do it. Or, or, I don't feel like doing it. It's not like that. So it's a pandemic. It's a global responsibility. And everybody has to put in their efforts. And understand. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Dr. Dr. Yadu, good morning. This is me, Anijit here from Bangalore. I have a question. Yes, sir. Go ahead, sir. Uh, so I uh, actually wanted to ask about uh, children's schools are starting up. So got a notification from my son's school. He's going to standard one. So he, we got a notification that uh, they have asked uh, advice from us whether school can start from 15th of July. So what is your advice on this? So uh, as I mentioned in my presentation, the best thing for us to do is to stay awake because the pandemic is not over. Okay, so there is no debate regarding that. If somebody can work from home, somebody can uh, continue the learnings from home in whatever way, I'm not very sure about that. That is the best possible thing. With the minimal, you know, attending, uh, minimal uh, visitation to the schools or the hospitals or the colleges or, or the office buildings. So if that can be managed that in, 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 in certain ways, that is the best. But if you definitely have to go to the you know, colleges or the schools, uh, everybody should understand the seriousness of the situation. Everybody should make sure that they're following all the protocols. And because kids, I'm not sure whether they will be able to implement it, uh, implement the measures at all times. And uh, so 
but they can probably if they really have to start they can start it on a trial basis and see maybe the colleges can start first and the higher schools can start first and then see how it goes or maybe they can do alternate days one batch can come this day or another can batch can come on alternate days something like that so that there is no too much of crowding happening there and transportation is another challenge for the kids because the the buses they have to increase uh, they have to go more frequently because of the number of uh, we cannot take so much of uh, children as they used to take it before isn't it they have to reduce the number of people carrying they carrying in the buses as well so all these are challenges there so there are there is no one word one line answer there there are more questions than answers of course but um, we should understand the basic concepts and then try to resolve the, each situation so school has asked advice from parents as well what advice can we share or is it possible for 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 your folks to reach out to schools to educate them uh, my son is at uh, baldwin boys high school so mm -hmm. how exactly what can i advise actually i got a mail uh, on on uh, you know they have this website created mm -hmm. so what advice can i give them so you can go to this uh, government website sir so they have a standard operating procedures there so in that they have uh, in my gov my gov is the website where they have uh, put up some notifications some do's and don'ts when the school is starting okay so you can start okay. with that you can start with that and uh, you can start discussing and making sure that all the measures which the government has advised have has it been implemented adequately for the safety of the kids that is that is most important thing that the parents have to ascertain that the schools have been able to implement all these safety measures and uh, and once the kid goes to the school the, the all the kids can be educated properly and make sure that they also follow all the protocols it may be it may not be very easy but of course uh, we have to be in touch with the school authorities to make sure that they understand our concerns and then and they can always get back to us if they have any doubts and concerns and the discussions can keep happening and it may be a good idea for all the parents to have a have a zoom meeting like this or some online meetings like this so that people parents can advise the health authorities or the school authorities and school people authorities can inform the uh, parents regarding the challenges that they are facing etc so obviously a lot of discussions needs needs to happen here yeah. uh, thank you doctor sir chat good morning sir there is one more question has been raised is is additional nutrition important other than regular food to keep up immunity see nutrition wise as i mentioned uh, any healthy food like vegetables salads fruits etc is always uh, is always good in uh, boosting your immunity adequate rest you need to take adequate sleep is a must don't exert yourself too much and if you, if you have any symptoms like fever cough running nose etc body aches etc stay at home get adequate rest so these are all the precautions because body can fight and take care of most of the mild infections so you don't really have to worry you have to just give it time and opportunity for the body to take care of this situation so uh, nutritionally don't starve yourself eat on time and eat healthy food that those that those things should be sufficient if you are healthy and the other they should be uh, body should be able to take care of the mild infections so if you are some if you are somebody who with comorbidities then definitely there are uh, specific things that you need to follow uh, to keep yourself safe good morning um dr rangaswamy from hyderabad okay. i would like to know apart from this uh, bleaching powder solution that is sodium hypochlorite yeah is there any any other agent for uh, disinfecting or sanitizing the premises like clinic or house or room or whatever do we have anything uh, else yeah hospital we are using sodium hypochlorite and uh, bleach sir apart from that uh, uh, people can if we have tried using the detol and other solutions as well but it, you, know, you need to see which surfaces you are trying to clean isn't it some for example equipments like uh, uh, specific equipments have specific requirements for example our bronchoscopes endoscopes and all we cannot clean with uh, this hypochlorite and all. we have to use uh, glutaraldehyde side x etc so if if your uh, different equipments have different uh, needs but the general in general the, the surfaces can be cleaned with sodium hypochlorite and bleach that's what we are using currently but when it comes to specific surfaces like for example systems laptops rubber surfaces the scopes instruments certain instruments have certain criteria so those obviously needs to be followed and for hand sanitization skins and all alcohol based solutions the 
the hand rubs which are available in the hospital those hand rubs are, are are sufficient and good enough and if those are also not available the best thing is soap and water wash your hands with soap and water following all the methods which i showed that will take care of most of the things some agents are suggesting like you know nano silver with zinc oxide etc something things are there so things are coming up new things are coming up Actually. can we rely on that or go ahead with the same bleaching powder solution <laughs> i would i would still go with the time tested thing unless it is proven because i'm not very quite aware of that i have to discuss with uh, infection control team no so studies still now there is no studies that's why i'm asking i can't really recommend thank something. you okay thank you. thank you thank you i think uh, hope you all you know the query has been answered yeah i'm thanking dr pavan to you know to have a wonderful session and uh, thank you all for joining have a safe and you know good day thank you thank you all stay at home stay healthy stay safe thank you so much thank you so much sir it was really wonderful thank you so much